I'm Corbett Wall with USDA Livestock and Grain Market News here with your feed, weekly feeder cattle market summary for the week ending March the 23rd where we got feeder cattle and stocker cattle and calves all pretty much selling unevenly steady to two dollars lower with several instances as much as five dollars lower and that's included on calves and stockers and yearlings uh, in many major auction markets and in the Texas direct market which is a, a big loss on a direct market like that and that was especially on those cattle weighing over 800 pounds where they saw those stiff losses out in the country but uh, one of the main things that was causing the weakness was this huge rain making storm that just parked itself right over the central part of the United States and just sat there pretty much all week and uh, you know some of the measurements weren't that impressive from maybe one or two inches but it was just persistent wet uh, kind of sloppy conditions and it uh, kind of curbed our seats there in most all of our major auction markets there through the central part of the United States the guys just haven't dealt with a lot of mud and really adverse weather conditions hardly at all for a long time just decided maybe just to put it off another week selling those cattle and the same thing on the buying end they just you know weren't real excited about buying some calves or or bigger feeding cattle in this mud and feedlots also dealing with some mud but uh, you know some places did get a lot of rain there was spots you know in, in almost every area Texas Oklahoma places in Kansas and Missouri and going up north even further that got uh, as much as eight inches or more and so you know maybe had some local flooding in those areas but just that that rain that persistent wet weather right through there it just kind of cooled off the demand and uh, and enlightened receipts which made for kind of a, a little bit lower trading session right there but uh, you talk about Texas East Texas now the whole eastern half of Texas they've had quite a bit of rain they had some good rains over the winter they've got pond water they've got grass they can take some cattle in most of them had to sell the biggest part of their their cow herds and uh, so they are starting to get into the stocker market and want to turn some cattle out some of those cattle are coming from Mexico we've got uh, imports so far for the year even though we're not that far into the year but Compared to last year, the uh, imports of feeder cattle from Mexico are up over 20%. And a lot of those are staying right there in the southwest, they're close to Texas. Now in the western half of Texas, including most of the panhandle of Texas, you know, they haven't had a whole lot of moisture at all. Did have a few light snows there through the winter and was really hoping for some early spring moisture. Didn't hardly get anything out of this big front here. So they're starting to brace themselves for another really, really dry uh, year there and going into the hot summer if these temperatures stay as mild as they are it could really get serious again there in, in the western part of Texas and in the panhandle. Cattle on feed come out Friday uh, March 1st inventories come out at 102.6 which was very close to the average guess which was just over 102 uh, placements were 102.8 compared to the guess which was 102.7 which was an average they had a huge span on the guesses there from people all over the place and people wondering where these placements were going to come out they continue to run higher all the time but we've had really heavy receipts in the mild winter there were very few weeks where guys couldn't sell cattle this might be the first real week that we've seen uh, reduced receipts uh, really because of the weather but uh, We've had heavy marketings because the market's been so good, the weather's been so good, it's pulled a lot of these calves and feeder cattle to town early. So far uh, for this year, nationwide auction receipts are running 2.4% uh, heavier than last year, but at the same time they're 3.4% lighter than the five-year average, which tells you that we don't have as many calves out there, which we know that's true because our cow herd is much smaller than it was just a few years ago. Uh, marketings of fed cattle out of the feedlot were at 98, points, uh, 98 even percent and that is uh, some lower than what they expected at 99.5 and that's really the only bearish uh, spot in that cattle on feed report and it's not a real strong bearish tone to it. But uh, we keep having 
more cattle and we've had year on year increases almost pretty much every month for almost two years now and we know that we've got less cattle than we did two years ago but some people think that a lot of these smaller feedlots and mom and pop operations a lot of them have shut down quit handling cattle those are the ones that don't report so I think maybe a larger percentage of the cattle are going to the larger feedlot operations and those are the ones that do report and so it may be showing that just a little bit but wouldn't think it'd be too much but uh, like everybody else I think one of these months it's going to show up and really drastically in this cattle on feed report that we are very very short of numbers uh, we get some more cattle work through this feedlot system there and and we start seeing over the next two or three months we don't expect very many marketings of feeder cattle so we think placements could be a lot lighter because the southeast has sold the lion's share of their cattle on those high prices uh, you know the central part of the country and in the major grazing areas even over into the west those cattle are going to be turned out and we don't have a whole lot of yearling feeders yet to sell so there's not going to be a lot of cattle to sell probably all through the spring and uh, one of these days those numbers are really going to be glaring and it could draw some interest and some and some demand from outside the industry and some more support and cause these prices to go up again even though right now it seems like we've kind of hit a lull we've gotten as high as we can for the way beef prices are for the way fed cattle are uh, you know this week we did regain some of the month's losses uh, fed cattle are a little bit higher this week ranging from 126 which was steady up to 128 which could have been a little higher and spots in between were as much as a dollar fifty higher and the dress basis sales were steady to too higher from 202 to 204 and the northern feedlot areas kind of have an edge on the southern boys right there but uh, when we look at our regional weighted averages this week in the north central states a seven to eight hundred pound steer this week cost you 156.30 compared to 156.56 last week and 132.46 a year ago. Down in the South Central States, six to 700 pound steer cost you 167.16 compared to 167.32 last week and 141.13 a year ago. And down in the Southeast, five to 600 pound steer this week cost you 172.43 compared to 174.08 last week and 141.51 a year ago. That wraps up your summary for this week. Check out our website for more market news information at marketnews.usda.gov. From the Regional Market News Office in St. Joe, Missouri, we'll talk to you next week.